So for example, in this one, you know, basketball, like when you shoot, it kind of travel like a parabola kind of shape. You know, although it goes in here, it kind of goes like that. So it's a parabolic shape, it's <coughs> a projectile motion. So javelin, and this one, see how it's projectile motion? So when you travel it in like a parabola, upside down parabola, okay? So a lot of this, so firework, when it explodes and when it falls down, that's also a projectile motion. Have a look at this video. Very close to that. <laughs> See, that's projectile motion, like when you chuck the bird. Isn't it? around us. So let's look at some definition. You need to know this because in the question it actually tell it, it uses this term so you need to know what each term is talking about. So for example, when you're projecting something, so you will project that at an angle. Okay, so that is called the angle of projection. Now of course when you project something or when you throw something you will have to have an initial velocity, otherwise, you know, you're just holding it or it just won't move. So, you know, the initial velocity, so when you throw that, it reaches a maximum height and then eventually it drops back down. Okay, now the range is the distance from the starting point to the ending point. Okay, and what is the trajectory? Trajectory is the path, the equation of the path. Okay, so we should write this down. So projectile motion is the part that a thrown or projectile particle will be will take under the force of gravity and you are ignoring air resistance. So the next one, so a particle is projected at an angle known as the angle of projection with an initial velocity V. So the trajectory is the part of the projected particle and it can be described using parametric equation or Cartesian equation. We will actually look at both of these equations, both the parametric form and the Cartesian form. Okay, in fact, we actually start with the parametric equations and then we have to use that to find the Cartesian equation. Okay, back in parametric equations, do you remember? Yeah. How would you find the Cartesian equation? So oh, is that the um the four a x? Four a x. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. Four a y. Yeah. So that one. So do you remember that in parametric equation is x equal to two a t y equal to a t squared? How how do you you know find the Cartesian? You have to eliminate t, isn't it? So Cartesian equation is when you have a parameter. So x as a function expressed in terms of a parameter. And then y as a function expressed in terms of that parameter. These are called parametric equations. And when you want to find the Cartesian equation, you want to eliminate that parameter. Okay? We will have a look at that um, when we look at some problems. Okay? Now the range, we talked about this before. The range is the maximum horizontal distance between the initial position, the starting point, and the final position of the particle, so the finish point. Okay, so it's only the horizontal distance. So for example, we will look at the object that is thrown at, let's say on top of the building. So for example, this one. So the horizontal, the range that we are looking at this distance on the x-axis to this distance here. So that is what the range is. It's the horizontal distance. Okay, there's one more. The maximum height. So the maximum height, it will be the maximum point between the path and to the ground level. Okay, it's always to the ground level. Okay? Okay, you need to know all this terminology because in the questions they will ask you what is the maximum height. So you need to know what the maximum height is. Did you say the path was um what was the path? The path? The path is yeah. the trajectory. So which is the path that the parabola takes. So kind of like the range or in mathematical mm -hmm. terms? In mathematical terms, 
the path you're expressing using an equation, and that's what we talk about here, the trajectory is the path of the projected object, and to express that mathematically is the equation of that problem. Okay. Either in parametry form or in Cartesian form. Okay, so just the equation? Yes. Okay. So what we can see here is the projected object. Now this is actually from a height, okay, from a top of building, so I'm going to make that zero so it kind of projects on the ground. So what else you can see here is that this object is going to be projected at an angle of 60 degrees. Okay, so that's 60 degrees, plus the launching speed is 50 meters per second. Okay, so what you can see here is that the direction, so in projectile motion we're going to, this is the only um, case where you can look at the x, x direction and the y direction separately. Okay, so we're going to be looking at, so of course what are x, x is the horizontal component, so y, which is, is the vertical component. So we're going to be seeing a few projections and see how the horizontal and vertical component change. Okay, so let's project it. You can see that as it reaches the maximum height, would, so the y component becomes zero, and then when it comes back down, the y component points to the ground. Gravity affects the y component because gravity pulls the object straight towards the ground. Okay, so that's why it changes the Y component. But there's no force that pulling the object horizontally, so that's why the X component will always be the same length, the same value, not change. So let's change this slightly. So for example, we're gonna change this into launching from a maximum from a height. Let's say a hundred platform. Okay, so you're launching it from a platform at an angle of sixty degrees and at a speed of fifty. So let's have a look. So you can see that the Y also when it reaches the maximum, it becomes zero, and then when it comes down, it points at the ground. Okay, so that is the other type of projection that you will see. <coughs> now, I'm not sure if you noticed, when you first start, the Y is this length, but when it goes back down here, it's the Y length is a bit longer, okay, because is the initial y plus a bit of gravity, so that's why it's you know slightly longer. The other variation that you will see is when you're launching from an angle of zero. So what that is, you can see that there's no y component. So you're launching this. Let's see what happens to the path. So if you're launching at angle of zero, what that means is that imagine a plane is flying, it just drops something that would be launching something from the zero. In other words, you're launching it from the, the later half of the problem. So you're launching it from the maximum point. So this curve, it starts from the maximum point and it just drops down here. What's that from here? It just drops down. So pretty much these are the three different types of projections that you will see. And they will come up in questions. Okay. Um, just one more thing with the with the last one, you can see that when we first start, see how it's horizontal. Um, there's no y component, so the y component is actually starts with only subject to gravity. Okay, so you, you're not throwing it up. Okay, so here are a few more just videos. So you can see that this one launches from the ground. So when you launch, you can see that this is the initial velocity that we're going to throw at. And we will split this into two components. One is the X component, and this one is the Y component. So the Y component is the vertical component, the X component is the horizontal component. Okay. So you can see that at maximum height, you only have the horizontal components, your Y components becomes disappears, which means it becomes zero. And then you go down, and you just hit. 